everybody and welcome to Five on Friday where I talk about my five favourite books of the week. So we are at week whatever we are of, of staying at home and it's um, the 8th of May and we're going back to school. Some people are going back, some kids are going back to school next week and then we've got more kids going back to school the week after. But there's still lots and lots of time at home. So I hope that you have been finding a little bit of time to do some reading. I've been a little bit better with my reading this week. But I think I said last Friday I've found it really hard to keep up with reading um, during this time. My brain has just been all over the shop like more than usual. I know some of you that know me are like, your brain's always over the shop, all over the shop, but I've really been um, finding it just like, ah, I just haven't had the headspace to read. But I've done some great reading this week and the girls have certainly been doing heaps of reading. Um, lots of you made lovely comments on videos I put up with the girls last night talking about their uh, books that they've been reading while we've been in isolation. They have read a lot. They have also done a lot of Minecraft and Roblox. So, you know, like don't think I'm some uber mother. I am so not some uber mother. I, mate, I am failing all over the shop, I assure you. It is relentless. It is relentless. Um, should I say that again? It's relentless. Anyway, um, I, shan't, I shan't dwell on that because I start to get a little bit ragey, but um, it has been another long week. I hope your week has been really, really great. Um, what I want to show you this afternoon is five books for a few different age groups. So these are some picture books and a non-fiction book and a really great book for, I guess, middle grade to YA readers. So first up, I've got my Wonderful Grandmother by the brilliant Kate Knapp. Um, I adore everything Kate Knapp does and she will be so familiar to so many of you through her Twig Seeds range of stationery and crockery. I mean, I just have all of the Kate Knapp stuff. We have Ruby Red Shoes toys. We've, we are like hardcore devoted Ruby Red Shoes fans. So for those of you who don't know, Ruby Red Shoes is an aware hair and she lives with her beautiful grandmother in a colourful caravan um, and grandmother is the Bushka Galena Galushka. I didn't even really need to look at the back cover to remember that. I've been reading Ruby Red Shoes books for years. So there's, I think, three kind of small chapbooky size Ruby Red Shoes books and then there's some um, early primers or board books which are really beautiful as well. This one, I kind of don't know why... Hey, if you ever watch this, I don't know why you didn't do this earlier. It's actually really nice to have a book just completely celebrating um, the grandmother because she is beautiful. I love the Bushka Galena Galushka. She is, I think, my favourite character. I mean, I love Ruby, but I love the grandmother. This is such a gorgeous book. And with Mother's Day coming up on um, Sunday, this might be a really nice one to, if you can grab a copy of it, to give to grandmothers. It is truly gorgeous. My name is Ruby Red Shoes and I live with my grandmother, the Bushka Galina Galushka. I think she is wonderful. Let me tell you why. And then it goes through why she is wonderful. I love this one. One day we went to the shops and she forgot to change out of her fluffy slippers. She didn't mind that people looked at her with surprise. And she said she might wear her slippers out next time too. What's wonderful about my grandmother is she likes the clothes I wear. She says things like, that's colourful, what fun, and very original. And so it goes on and it tells you all of these gorgeous things that Ruby loves about her grandmother. And it's got the gorgeous, gorgeous cake nap watercolours. I mean, hello, look at that tea party. I want to be in that tea party. And they are social distancing and there is only two of them. So that tea party is totes allowed. Well done, Kate. Um, oh, I love this one. She uses, sometimes she uses big words I don't understand, like quandary or hullabaloo. She helps me look them up in the dictionary and then we can both use them. Now, this is a quandary that led to a hullabaloo. I just love it. Oh, Jo, yeah, does she love um, Ruby Red Shoes? Does Ellie love Ruby Red Shoes? I just love it. I read this with Chip P the other night and... Oh, gosh, I just love it. We both really enjoyed it. And we also really enjoyed a trip down memory lane then looking at our other Ruby Red Shoes books. Uh, it's just divine. I'm really lucky to have a couple of um, Kate Knapp prints hanging on my walls at home. I just, as I said, I love everything Kate does. And this is exquisite. I really like it. This is not an afterthought. This is not a how can I extend the Ruby Red Shoes brand book. This is a truly beautiful, complete package celebrating grandmothers. I adore it. 
Next up, oh my gosh, I really hope um, that Liv um, Gatfield is watching this. I don't think she will be, but Liv, if you're out there, I probably owe this one to your boys. Chris McKimmy is a Brisbane author, illustrator, and he writes really, really unusual books. I love them. I love them so much that I purchase quite a lot of them. Whenever a new one comes out, I purchase three, four, five copies because I, I want to give them to people. And then when I look at them, I think, I don't know who to give them to. They're so unusual sometimes that I think, well, people think I'm odd. Um, so I've given them to my dear friend Liv, who I grew up with, um, because she, I know, appreciates the quirk in life like I do. And I know that her boys, Levi and Solomon, also appreciate the quirk in life. And her husband is one of my, was one of my husband's um, best friends. And they're just a family that get quirkiness. And I feel like, so I've given that family the entire collection of Chris McKibby books. I just love them. You you have to just kind of go with the quirk. Um, sometimes people look at them, and even when I've read them, I re remember reading one to the, I think, Brian Banana, Yellow Dot Sunshine. I read that to the kindy boys and girls um, earlier in the year when I was at school. And I remember some of the kids just looking at me like, what is going on? What is going on? But that's what I love. It, it's, these are not picture books that you just go, oh, yeah, that was nice. They're picture books that you explore over and over and over again because they are so flipping clever. They really are. I Need a Parrot by Chris McKimmy. Great end papers, love them. First end paper, final end paper, love it when there's a different end paper. This one is celebrating or, or, or talking about what a child needs versus what a child wants and what a parrot or a bird really, really, really needs, which is probably not to be kept in a cage. And I've always resisted the bird thing with my own children because I've always said, I don't want, I don't like birds in cages. So this book kind of spoke to me. I love that he always does a really beautiful dedication. And it's always to children he knows or um, always to his dog, which is a black Labrador, I think, from memory. Um, and, you know, he's, he's just he thanks the kids who, whose illustrations he's used and so forth. He often has, as on the title page here, kids' illustrations woven throughout. I need a parrot. Now, you'll start to see what I mean by the kind of quirk. Not a pretend parrot, who's a pretty boy then, you need to see the whole page. Not a turkey. Now, because Chris McKimmy lives in Brisbane, I think he's still in Brisbane, he understands that a turkey probably, I think, should be in a cage. I am not a fan of the bush turkey. I watched three walk across here just earlier and pull out all of the sunflowers that we have planted. I won't say what I wanted to do to them. Anyway, he often has a bush turkey in his books, which I love. You can start to see that the layout is kind of quirky. There's some funny things happening with the text. The illustrations are really, really quirky. They're just funny. And I like this book. It feels like a stream of consciousness. And I have to say a lot of his books feel like that. I speak stream of consciousness style. A lot of people say, wow, kind of, wow, you just kind of say whatever. Um, which is probably confronting for some people. But I love that Chris McKinney does this as well. I've got a cat. I need a parrot. Stop it, Mr. Dillon. It feels like sandpaper in my ear. I will clean its cage. I will teach it words. Hello, cocky. Hello, cocky. Apple bear, apple bear, apple bear. Hello, cocky. Dance, cocky, dance, cocky. You can see it's just sort of like this kid's stream of consciousness. So it can take a while to get into these books, but that's what I think is brilliant about them. Ford Street Publishing has done a brilliant job with this book. I am so pleased. Oh, I love this page here. I won't, I won't explain it to you, actually. I'm going to leave the end part. But it's fantastic. It, it has been um, shortlisted in the CBCA Awards very deservedly. So I just wanted to really point point out Chris McKimmy to you all. And if you don't have his books, go and find the back catalogue of them. They're brilliant at your local library, which will be reopening very soon. Um, next up, I want to show you some re three brilliant books by Josh Langley. Now, these are great. And this one here came out a little while ago. It's okay to feel the way you do, otherwise you wouldn't be you. And it won the um, Australian Book Industry Awards in 2018 for, I think, small publishing house. I'm not actually, I should really look that up. This is, you know, this, why do I do this every Friday? I say something and then I'm like, oh, I really should have Googled that and so I'd see if that was correct. 
Anyway, there's three books in this box set, which do not have a box, but they are like a set. I think you need to own all three of them. There's this one here, Being You Is Enough and Other Important Stuff. And then there's the one I showed you. And then this is the latest one, Magnificent Mistakes and Fantastic Failures, Finding the Good When Things Seem Bad, which is, you know, appropriate for right now. I like the dedication. I understand the dedication. For my big brother, John, sorry I broke your model aeroplanes. If this was my book, I'd say, for my little sister, Amber, I'm sorry I read your diary. I so hope she's not watching this because that will lead to all kinds of trauma. I shouldn't have even said that out loud. She knows, but it, it's still traumatic. Um, anyway, he then has this great introduction where he talks about all of the mistakes that he made when he was young and how they taught him something, which is some, you know, with all of the STEM stuff that we're doing at the moment and the makerspace movement, we're encouraging kids to accept failure as a part of learning. And hi, Kate Knapp. Hello, Kate Knapp. Chris McKimmy is wonderful. He was my art school teacher. Was he a really scary art school teacher, Kate Knapp? Because, um, oh, I've met him a few times and he um, he's absolutely delightful, but I... He's very like, I don't know, I think he'd be a bit scary. My mum went to art school and her art school teacher was William Robinson, who's a very famous Australian Queensland-based also artist. And he was equally kind of like, yeah, you they're the master, you're the student. I yeah, I don't know. I'd love to know what Chris McKinney was like as an art school teacher. And hi, Kate. I've been meaning to email you for ages. I shouldn't be having this discussion on Facebook Live, but I have been meaning to email you for ages. I've got a friend that desperately wants to meet you. Anyway, back to Josh Langley. Mistakes can be magnificent. You can learn a lot from making a, making a mistake. While it might not seem like it at the time, mistakes can be surprisingly helpful. When we learn from our mistakes, we become better, smarter and wiser. And because we're human, we'll keep making them. So there are lots of chances to grow. And it goes on. It, they're quite long books, which I really like. They do not speak down to the small child. So I'd be really happy to read these to my kindergarten students. But equally, I would read these to my grade six, seven and eight students. There is so much to discuss in these books. There's, um, you could read a little bit every day. This is the sort of book that when we go back, to school, I would be encouraging the year six teachers, for example, to have on their desks and read a little bit of every morning and then make that the discussion point for the morning. I think that there's a lot that you could do with these in a school context, but they're also great ones to have at home. So um, Chick Peepwitzer and I have read all three of them in the last week and we've really, it's stuff you know in your head, but sometimes it needs to be you need to read about it to um, then when you read a book, it gives you the words. You become more articulate about the subject, don't you? So I really like that books like this give you the words when you're not quite sure how you're feeling and, and you don't quite know how to express that. Books basically make you more articulate, don't they? So I highly, highly recommend this three set by Josh Langley. They are phantasmagorical. And I can see that Kate Knapp has replied, so I'm going to look. He was so funny. Yes, scary in a good way. Yes, I suspected he might be scary in a good way. That's exactly what I was trying to say, actually. All right. Next book up is Butterfly Yellow. It, oh my gosh, it's just exquisite. So this um, came out, I think, in the US and then UQP, a Brisbane publisher, picked it up and they have uh, done an Australian edition of it. My laptop's wobbling because it is on the... Um, clothes drying stand because that was literally all I could find to put my laptop on. So if it falls off and I disappear, you know why. It's not a very sturdy wash stand. Anyway, Butterfly Yellow. I read this in two nights. I had to read it in two nights because I, I just had to know what happened. I've written quite a lot of notes and I'll probably full review this one on my blog so that I can get it right, but I'm going to try my best. So this one is set in 1981, six years after the Vietnam War has ended. And in it, the main character, one of the main characters, Hung, she has um, she was in Vietnam. Her grandmother, her father and her mother were all killed in the Vietnam War or died during the Vietnam War of illness. And her young brother, who she adored, Lin, 
um, was taken accidentally as part of Operation Baby Lift, which took um, children from Vietnam to America. So, well, look, yes, you can go to the toilet. I may have, again, locked my children in their rooms. Well, I didn't lock them in. I just gave them a packet of biscuits and said, could you be quiet for 20 minutes? Um, so her little brother was accidentally taken as part of Operation Baby Lift. Um, so six years later, when the Vietnam War has finished, Hun um, travels to Texas um, as a refugee with the sole purpose of finding her brother. She has spent six years feeling guilty about the circumstances in which he was accidentally taken and, and she she just has to find the one sole remaining member of her family. She's desperate to find him. She arrives in um, Texas and meets this really hilarious aspiring cowboy called Leroy, who is a young guy from, I think, Austin. I think I made that up. I don't know, somewhere else in America. Anyway, he wants to be an aspiring, um, he's an aspiring cowboy. So he's off on a bit of a road trip, I guess, finding himself. And he ends up getting landed a bit with Hun as she tries to find her little brother. Um, uh, Leroy, as he calls himself, is a Clint Eastwood obsessive as well. And um, my brother who passed away was a Clint Eastwood obsessive. So I really enjoyed the references to Clint Eastwood. I recognised a lot of them from things Simon had said over the years. Um, this is just exquisite. They kind of then end up on a road trip together. Um, they're both around the same age. Hung has very, very limited English. And it took me a while to understand some of the language in the book because she speaks in um, Vietnamese and when it's, but it's this mashup of English, Vietnamese. And when it's written, I actually had to read those parts out loud to um, sort of understand what she was saying. So that took me a while to get into, but I think that actually really added to it because it gave me as a reader that sense that, oh, this is really tricky. And I think that that also gives you the idea how tricky it is for someone who's learning English to speak English. So. It was, I thought that was actually a really clever way to introduce that um, mashup of English and Vietnamese. Um, they find her brother quite early on in the book, so that's not a particular plot spoiler. And um, he doesn't remember Vietnamese. He doesn't remember much of Vietnam. He is a fully um, Americanised kid. He's been adopted by a family and... So uh, Leroy and Hung have to kind of um, find this middle ground again where I guess all three of their cultures, the kind of cowboy culture and Vietnamese culture and then American culture kind of, they have to find this sort of meeting point and it becomes this beautiful melting pot of culture. There's this gorgeous scene at a county fair where they're on a Ferris wheel and this is where the title comes from as well. And a yellow butterfly lands. I'm, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. A yellow butterfly lands on the young boy's hand and um, she starts singing. Oh, I'm going to cry. She starts singing um, this gorgeous, and now my dog's walking in. I just cannot get this right on a Friday. Um, and a yellow butterfly lands on his hand and she starts singing this song in Vietnamese, which as it turns out, Leroy knows in English and they all start singing together and it is just exquisite. It's the culminating scene of the whole book. Um, this book could be made into a movie. It's about how we can be both fragile and strong at the same time. It's about culture. What else have I written? Oh, look, fragile and strong in equal measure. See, um, it's just beautiful. I'd highly recommend it for readers 12 and up. It's definitely a middle grade to young adult read. Um, it's got everything. It's not a story of war, but there's elements of um, the Vietnam. Well, there's a lot of history about the Vietnam War, but it's just, it's it's got everything. It's got a touch of romance. It's got a road trip happening. It's just exquisite. I really enjoyed it. So enjoyed it. Oh my gosh, I so enjoyed it. And then my final book is a non-fiction one. It's called Gut Garden, A Journey into the Wonderful World of Your Microbiome. Now, I've been looking for something like this for a while because the whole um, prebiotics and probiotics is very, very big. And oh, look, I'm a fan of a bit of kombucha. In fact, I'm addicted to it and kefir. But I 
um, haven't found something that has explained it brilliantly in a book until now. I really like this one. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a great start. So it talks about um, what are microbes, um, they being tiny life forms that you can only see under a microscope. I guess the reason I've been looking for something like this is it's just so in the media at the moment. It's so in cookbooks. It's so in um, everything about making sure we look after our gut flora, that I have been wanting something for a while for my own children, but also for my students at school to explain in childlike language or child appropriate language what it all means and i think this book does a really good job um, it talks about the science behind um, microbes and then it introduces this young boy and then we see him throughout the book and there's cutaways of his body and looking at the gut and all of that sort of thing um, it looks at the bad um, bugs bad microbes and the good microbes it talks about the microbes which are in your mouth. There are 500 spe over 500 species of microbes in your mouth. Um, it talks about goes through the body, goes into the stomach. Is going to get gross. There is poo. There's a lot of poo talk and fart talk, which of course my kids love. Um, but it's really, it's really interesting. There was some stuff in it that I was like, nee, not sure we needed to go down into that territory when it talks about antibiotics and how they are. Uh, Bad, which I understand, but they're also vitally important. Um, so it, look, it doesn't say they're bad. It says that they do kill the good bacteria in your body, which is true. Um, but I, I, that was probably the only bit that I thought, well, let's just stick to explaining rather than maybe. I felt like it had an opinion, although maybe I read that with my own bias, so I'm not sure. But I really overall think this is the best book that I've seen explaining sort of the gut flora and the microbes and all that sort of thing. Oh, that's the page where it talks about antibiotics. So, look, you know, it goes into the history of them. Um, but, yeah, I just was, was a bit challenged by that page. Um, and then it talks about prebiotics and probiotics um, and where you find them, like in live yogurt and kefir and in kombucha. Um, and it talks about fermented food, which I'm a big fan of. I love a bit of um, sauerkraut and some pickles. I'm a big fan of fermented food. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we're going to love the poo page. But it also talks about Crohn's disease and a couple of other um, gut problems that can arise when things go wrong. It's really interesting. So I highly recommend that one if that is your shit. I am going to go before my children come out of the rooms um, because they finished the biscuits that I gave them. Um, hope isolation is going well for you. Hope if you are a mother or a mother figure that you have a lovely Mother's Day. I will see you all next Friday, I guess, unless, I don't know, the world ends? I don't know. I'm just rambling now because uh, I'm actually a bit nervous about touching this because I think the whole thing's going to fall off. I can see it's been slipping as I've been talking to you. Anyway, I'm going to try and end this. Have a great weekend.